Yes, we are here, and you know, it's always great catching up with fam. Coos, it has been too long. Good friend, outstanding analyst for the Nets on Yes, Sir, Coos Doc. How you doing, my friend? Gee, seeing your face just brightens my day. Paul, <laughs> <laughs> been keeping up, up to date with our group messages and chatting and whatnot, but uh, this is, it's awesome to see you. It really brightens yes. Yes, well, let's go, let's go back a little bit. Um, you and I both are tied to the uh, Midwest before making the move to New York. Take us back. What was that transition like for you, a Chicago kid coming to NY? The short story or the long story? Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's great. What, what stands out most, um, I had through work and through whether it was basketball or whatever, and my, I spent plenty of time in New York. Um, and was well-versed in what to expect out of New York City, which was a huge part of my excitement to get out here. But in the time of actually moving to New York, I had a dear friend who lived out here, who had a friend who was buying a place that it was uh, somewhere in the village that I could rent. And he's like, got you, got you covered, got you covered. You can rent it from him, he's closing on it, you're all good don't even worry about that so one of the toughest things is you know moving to new york and especially not entirely having a good feel for um geographics was finding an apartment so i was like oh my god like the toughest part of what i need to do i got out of the way hadn't even thought about that so you're figuring out all the other logistics well as like the days were approaching this apartment closing continued to get pushed back He's like, you're good, you're good. And you know what, just, just ship your boxes, like whatever you're gonna bring to my office. You can keep them there and then just come with your suitcases. So long story short, two of my best girls and me, I had two suitcases, flew out to New York, had shipped some other boxes, the rest of my stuff. Um, I'm, I'm pretty light in terms of things I keep. Uh, I, I like to keep things simple, um, but so, Stayed in the hotel that weekend. The apartment closing kept getting pushed back. And so I then ended up staying on a friend of a friend's couch who was here for about the first two weeks and getting ready for work. It was uh, the third floor of a walk up. There was no air conditioning. It was about off. As you can imagine, my hair was out of control. Um, everything, I was like, what is going on? I was living out of a suitcase of clothes that were now being reused. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. And I was like, this is not going to work. So finally, um, I found an apartment over on the Upper East Side. And uh, through Craigslist, I think it was really random. Uh, how so it, all, it all ended up working out. The point being, my first couple weeks here were definitely a little bit of a rude awakening of just getting myself settled, getting all my belongings, getting all my things. Uh, but from the moment I got here, this city has just got so much energy. Uh, so much passion for sports that it, I've been in love with it, fell in love with it, and it, it just really um, is such a truly special place. Yeah, you know, my, my story is kind of similar. You know, I've always, even growing up, kind of vibed with New York, whether it was the music scene, as I got older, the fashion scene, the passion from the sports fans, as you just, as you just brought up. When I moved, though, my window was, was really tight, and somebody mentioned that they had just built apartments above Barclays Center. So I was thinking about the whole geography thing, too. And I thought, oh, that just makes a whole lot of sense. I can just take an elevator down for home games. And so that was my first place in NY, and it worked out perfectly. But as you mentioned, people, you know, people either vibe with New York or they don't. You know, I've had people visit me who they had to be dragged to the plane to go home. They didn't want to leave. And I have others who couldn't wait to go back home. Like, they just, the pace of it, the hustle and bustle, that whole thing, they just didn't necessarily vibe with. And I had known for a long time that this was a place that I wanted to, that I wanted to, you know, end up. If I was going to end up anywhere, that New York would probably be that place. The one transition that I had, because everything happened so fast, and this was not only in New in New York, but when traveling on the road, was the food, Sarah. Like pacing myself with food. There were oh. so many amazing <laughs> restaurants, so many places to go, and you know how they say freshman fifteen. That my first year in New York, it was. It was a it was a freshman something. It was and there's just so many great food spots in New York and so many places to go, even when we're traveling on the road. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And and the crazy thing too, which I've learned and I've now in our quarantine, um, being back inside, 
so much in Chicago, which Chicago has the greatest of restaurants. I'm not going to start comparing cities and I'm going to get in trouble with people from all sides. Uh, but in Chicago, where I lived and home and just, it was much more um, normal, I would say, just to have like me and my friends would have like family dinner every Sunday. Someone would cook and someone would cook differently. So uh, we were, I was cooking way more. Um, even on a regular basis when I lived in Chicago and then coming here and for no reason other than maybe you're just in a different place to your point, eating out the concept of delivery, delivery at all hours, the, uh, you know, the ease of being able to walk out your door and you have everything at your fingertips. That's what during this quarantine time, and you know, we're on the road so much, we're traveling throughout the course of the season or even in the summer when it were bouncing around. Um, this has brought me back to my roots of how much I love to cook. <laughs> so uh, this has been a nice reminder um, of, of some of the dishes and some of the things and some of some of the ways you can cook. But I see, I, Greg, your Instagram stories are like top notch for me. I'm checking all day, every day because it brings such big smiles to my face. You and Erica and the things you guys are cooking. What has been what for you guys in terms of eating at home now, what's been your thing? Have you been ordering in, delivery, cooking? What, what's the plan? We've been, we've been, uh, we've been uh, which, uh, cooking. So my thing is um, I'm more the breakfast person and she's more the dinner person. We'll mix it up from time to time, but we've kind of gone with themes and she, you know, she loves, you know, themes and okay, so this past Sunday, we're going to have this big brunch as if we're out somewhere. So we've got the mimosas flowing, that whole thing, and just giving it that vibe as if we're out somewhere, having this big, you know, this big brunch, you know, in the morning. And so the plate was overflowing, she threw down. And so we just have different themes for different, you know, different nights as if we're eating out at this particular nice restaurant. So she's real modest, but she really, she really throws down and just, you know, just giving that like mindset as if we're still out and doing things, whether it's we're pretending we're out dancing and listening to music or whatever it may be, or at a at a nice restaurant and having a glass of wine or whatever it, it may be. So uh, we we definitely tried different things to um, entertain ourselves, to laugh, which is really important, especially <laughs> especially during this time, and uh, just trying to find and, and then finding different things to do to um, enrich our minds because Sarah, we're never going to get this time back. Like we're never. You know, once things start up again, you know it. I, we're all it's go 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 go. So this is kind of a time to try things that we've never tried before, or do things that were on our plate that we never really had an opportunity to do. Yeah, I think it's just such it, it's such a sensitive time, and this pandemic is impacting and affecting everyone in such a variety of ways, um, and it's overwhelming in all different areas and in, in the seriousness of it, the spirit of it needs to, to be obviously at the forefront at all times. We appreciate those um, who are dealing with it in different ways. But your point is just the concept of like the, the idea that I can wake up in the morning and just sit and read a book and not be like, okay, what time do I need to get to the next thing? You, know, how, you want to cook an elaborate meal that's going to take way too long and take hours. You could do it. Um, the appreciation I have just, for so many of my friends, and it's funny, we laugh because we're scattered all over the country, somewhere over in Europe, this is regular. And we're like, why haven't we been Zooming or Face? Like, why haven't we been connected <laughs> the same way um, all the time? And just, you know, all these different areas, in your, whether it's people are into writing or to reading or creatively or arts, or um, it, it really is one of those situations where it's like, th this is an opportunity to reset a little bit, take a breath, um, dig into the things that maybe you don't always have time for um, with the hectic schedule we have. Yeah. And that's the one thing I've been trying to make sure to appreciate. We're up against it, but I'm gonna finish where we started. Now that we've made the transition, you're a New Yorker now, what do you love most about New York? the feel and the energy i get and there's not one thing there's not one place um been here now for eight years or more around there um walking out my door and knowing that i could walk for an hour walk for 20 minutes different spots and just the the energy the vibe and um really just the diversity no matter where yes. you 
where you can find anything you want and you see the eclectic nature of whether it's the people, whether it's uh, what you're doing, whether it's the music, the, the food, it, all of it. Um, you can find anything you want in, in the mixture, in the diversity, in the melting pot of all of it. I think it's just an absolutely beautiful thing that I can't get enough of. You know, it's fun. I cannot give a better answer than that. That's literally my answer. It's the energy, the diversity, the fact that you can experience things with so many different people in different walks of life, whatever it may be. And there's certainly an energy and enthusiasm about this place, the hustle and bustle that's just like uh, un unlike anywhere else. So, no, I love it and miss it. And uh, just encouraging everybody again, stay safe. Um, stay home and uh, we're going to get through this thing and we can't get wait, can't wait to get back to the action, get back with you and to uh, continue to have fun. In the meantime, stay safe and we'll be chatting with you soon.